Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 28 and I'm going to discuss the curl of the curl, otherwise known as the double curl. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstorials.com. So the previous videos which are relevant to this are number 25 where I discussed the Laplacian operator, or I might call it grad squared, like that, and it's a scalar operator, and in videos 14 through 21 I discussed the product rules. So this is just an extension of all of the things I've done before, so for that reason I'm going to push to it pretty quickly, having shown how to, in general, manipulate these, these uh, expressions in the past. So if you don't understand what I'm doing, you probably should look at the videos, at least in the product rules, so product rules 1 through 5. Okay, just kind of, yeah, product rules 1 through 6 in fact. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the curl of A. So the curl of A is pretty straightforward. The point to note here is that we're getting back a vector field. Okay, i hat, j hat, k hat, where we define, of course, the vector a as a sub x in the i hat direction plus a sub y in the j hat direction and finally a sub z in the k hat direction. So taking the curl of that is pretty straightforward. If you don't know how to take the curl, look at video number 3 in this particular series. So the next thing we need to do is take the curl of this. Okay, so taking the curl of something is, is very straightforward, or the cross product, you, you compute the determinant of this particular 3 by 3 matrix. So we'll say we have the i hat, j hat, k hat, uh, and let me, put the, let me put a bracket like this. Okay, so we have our i hat, j hat, k hat on top, then the first one, we, we, the first, we'll say, operator is the grad operator, or the, well, the NABLA operator, so that goes here, and then we have, we have the the components of our curl of A, which we put here, here, and here. Notice, by the way, I've the minus sign here. What I do is, coming down to this step, I bring the minus sign inside and swap the swap the uh, the components. So, look, doing that is very straightforward. Again, you just need to be careful computing the components. And I've done it in in uh, we'll say I've done it like this. So we have uh, three different components. Now, the important point here is that we're dealing with a vector field. Now, if we were dealing with a scalar field, we'd have to look at we'd have to look at symmetries inside the particular expressions themselves. But when you're dealing with a vector field, you don't. What you do is you pick one of the dimensions, i, j, or k, and you work with that. And once you're able to simplify it or uh, come up with a better expression for that in one dimension, it, it's the same thing for all three dimensions. So you're just able to assume, if you, well, if you want, you can do it explicitly. But if if I solve an for the expression in i hat. I'm able to extend to j hat and k hat without actually explicitly doing them. Okay, so I hope you can accept that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on these this expression for i hat. Notice, by the way, we don't have any products because the well we do I suppose we do have products, but I'm not going to actually do the products. In the past, for example, it would have been del del y, and then I would have taken the product of del del x and a sub y and have done the product rule. But in this case, I'm not going to do that because it's much easier. So I'm just going to pick this one, I'm going to rub this out and just pick, pick the i hat dimension and work with that. So you'll have to bear with me one moment. So what we're doing is we're looking for symmetries. Now you can actually see the answer written on top, so that should help you, but it, to be honest, even if without the answer, it's not that diff it, it isn't that difficult. So let's go in the i hat direction. We have del del y, del del x, a sub y. We have, I'm going to write it this way for a particular reason, um, del 2 del y squared of a sub x. We have del 2 del z squared uh, a sub x. And we also have plus del del z, uh, del del x, a sub z. Now, there are two different ways of simplifying this expression, or two different angles, I suppose. Both of them are equivalent but one is easier than the other. So we're looking for symmetries. Well, th the immediate symmetry I see here is this one. So this looks to me like the, the grad squared, or we'll say the Laplacian on A. So that looks to me like we have grad, we'll say, excuse me, I'll do this up properly, grad squared A sub X. That's what it looks like to me. But if, if it is that, if that is the case, then what we're missing is minus del two del X squared on A sub X. All right? So, if that is the case, we can add and subtract this term here, and we'll be able to work with, we'll be able to get our Laplacian operator. And that's what we're going to do. 
Another way of looking at it, uh, another equivalent way of looking at it, is, is as follows. If you look here, right, we seem to have, if, if you look at the other terms, right, we, we have this common del del x term. Now we know that we'll say del del x and del del y is equivalent to del del y uh, del del x, so we can swap them. All right, so th I'm just showing you this other way for, for, for uh, I don't know, for completeness. So let's say if I write it this way, I can have del del y, a sub y, and then we have the other term which is over here, which will be del del z of a sub z. Now what that looks like to me, um, what it looks to me like we're missing the term del del x outside of del del x um, a sub x. It looks like we're missing that term, which of course is del 2 del x squared a sub x. The exact term which I, I, I suggest that I'm missing up here. Because if I add that term in here, okay, let's say if we add and subtract, but just looking at the addition term, let's say we have del del x a sub x like this, what we actually have, of course, is going to be the, the gradient of the divergence of a. Now, and if you don't believe me, just compute that, that expression and you have it. So, I've shown you two reasons why, what, why we're going to add and subtract the following. We're going to add and subtract del 2 del x squared a sub x. And we're going to add del 2 del x squared a sub x. Of course, we've, we've done nothing to the expression. We haven't changed the value of the expression. So we're going to group this term and this term and this term. And we're going to group these three terms here. And if you do that, the expression you're going to get is as follows. You're going to get, uh, you're going to get the gradient. Uh, you're going to get the gradient. We'll say I'm going to straight away extend it to the three dimensions. So you're going to get the the gradient of the divergence of a minus grad squared a, and there should be a vector sign underneath that. And that, of course, is going to be the curl of the curl of a, like that. Okay, very straightforward. So, like I said, if you're if you're if you're familiar with what I've been doing with the other product rules, well, then I'm sure you can accept that that was very straightforward. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also click on universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.